Hello, everybody, and welcome to Unaired, the show where we take TV shows canceled with episodes left unaired, review them, and then pitch how we think they could have continued. I am Ed, and with me today, Andy. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, I'm still here. You are still here. I never left. <laughs> so, Andy, uh, we had a bit of a snafu with this particular show. Yeah. This is our second recording of this show. I think it's uh, the curse of Puchinski. He wanted to come back, and I think he wanted to really get a, a new set of eyes on this. I think he wanted us to digest this for a week and come back to it, you know, renewed and, and refreshed. Yeah, so the show that we watched is a 1990s pilot called Puchinski, starring Peter Boyle, a.k.a. the dad from Everybody Loves Raymond, who ends up becoming a dog after he gets killed. Basic synopsis of the plot. He's also a cop. Um, But yeah, (laughs) this show has been burned into my brain because I think it was, what, a week and a half, two weeks ago, we recorded the first attempt at this. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it, it was two weeks ago wasn't it yeah i can still recite everything that happens in the show without my notes yeah i've i've been thinking about this one a lot um and when my audio just like crapped the bed uh, you know i i think i really took that as a blessing in disguise I, i have to be honest and it's funny because the initial recording, you made a joke about second chances. <laughs> this is our second chance at yeah, Puchinski. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, I I don't know. I, I think if I was going to say one thing before, you know, we talk about the episode, I think it's just that I was really enamored this time by Puchinski's transformation. I, I have to admit, it, w- it was far more than what we described it the first time we talked about it. I think we, we simply said that it was, um, you know, a man staring into a dog's soul. But, I, you know, I think in reality, it's a lot more complicated than that. And, uh, you know, I have some new thoughts about that. That's true, because you actually rewatched the pilot. Yeah, I, I needed to uh, get back in the groove of things and, you know, rethink my approach on uh, Puchinski. And I, again, I don't know how much I can express this. This show haunts me. I can't get it out of my head. I have, I didn't need to rewatch it. Every time, every week. Okay, let me clue you in, the listener. <laughs> every week I watch a terrible occasionally a good show and then it's gone i edit the episode pops back in my head a little bit and then it's gone permanently (laughs) this fucking show i have nightmares about this show this show i think it's a part of my soul now i think um i think i'm going to be carrying this one for a long time i think so too so this is the second week of dogist Probably should have mentioned that. Um, Dog August. Dogist. Dogist. Yeah, where we cover TV shows that are dog related. Uh, First week was Turner and Hooch, which actually aired in tandem with Puchinski on NBC. I think that this is the weirdest attempt to cash in on what I am going to call the doggy hour. It 100% was the doggy hour. And the best part is, there is a uh, a little stinger at the end of the Turner and Hooch pilot saying, stay tuned for Puchinski. <laughs> <laughs> and the best line of this whole promo is, he gets a new leash on life. Oh, boy. You know, uh, can I just say, the design of the title card for this show is just like brilliant i think it captures the true spirit of the show was that a pun because the spirit of peter boyle is exuded into a pooch you know i have a lot of strong feelings about peter boyle um 
I think the first time I watched this, I thought that this was a horrible um, effort on his part. Until I started to think more about how this episode was structured and really what he was given to work with and what this opportunity would mean for him as an actor uh, getting up in his ears, uh, that he wouldn't need to be on set at all and could just do voiceovers. Um, you know, I think he's just working with what he's got. See, we have pulled a complete 180, you and I, because the first time I unironically loved this show and you hated it. Yes. And now you've turned a corner and all I can think is this man was not in on this show whole hog or whole dog, should I say. I mean, I do you, I, I think the first time we watched this, I asked you if uh, you thought that he ad-libbed singing everybody loves somebody um and you said yes but you know i don't know anymore i don't know uh so this show (laughs) starts off with a title sequence very similar to another show we covered police squad where it just focuses on the little uh siren yeah the siren it's like a, but not like a typical siren, just a like single bulb siren that you like throw on the top of your car. You've seen them. You see them. You've, yeah, you've you've seen them. You you have one. Yeah, you know when like an undercover cop is like, oh fuck, I gotta put a siren on, and he pulls it out of his pocket and throws it on the top of his car. When your dad's friend Tony like pulls around the corner and he's mad at you. Oh man. Did you piss off Tony again? Dude. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. We'll talk we'll we'll talk later. We gotta hide you, man. <laughs> Tony's got a siren again. <laughs> so uh we get the dispatcher saying, Oh, we need you over at Magnitude Savings for questioning. And <laughs> Puchinski says Pujinski is the name of the officer, by the way. Yeah, that that's just a coincidence. Just a coincidence that Peter Boyle is named, his last name is Puchinski, and he becomes a dog. Anyway, Puchinski is like, oh, anybody tell you you got a real sexy voice? Oh my all the God. time, Puchinski. How do you know my name? Oh, I've heard all about you. On the bathroom wall. <laughs> Sets him up as a real skeevy dude from the beginning. Hey, I, and I love this too, right? Like, I think this was a late addition to the show. This little uh, line here to explain who Puchinski is. I like to think that the original cut of the show just started with this weird old man with no context. It would make sense, though, because it's just a shot of a siren in voiceover. Yeah, it seems. And, and he's not even in the shot. No, not at all. Peter, Peter Boyle, by the way, does not drive in this show. Well, no, he's he becomes a dog, so... Well, I, there is a shot where he's supposed... Anyway, but I'm just saying. <laughs> so, uh, we get over to Magnitude Savings, and his partner, Robert, is questioning the man who was robbed. Says, did the suspect have any distinctive features? Yeah, he had a gun to my ribs. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. And a big fan of that line read, too. I think we need a spinoff of this bank teller. I really think that Puchinski is very chill. Like, I think he's a very chill cop. Oh, he 100% is. He, You know, he just strolls onto the scene. He's like, whatever. Not just that he strolls onto the scene. He's there late. And Robert's pissed off because he's been covering. He's he says, and I quote, "He's been covering for him for a month, and he's sick of it." <laughs> um, I'm really excited for you to talk about this next part. Yeah. So um, <laughs> then we get to Puchinski. He's hungry. He goes to a hot dog vendor, of course. And in hindsight. He gets a hot dog. 
he becomes a dog. Uh, I don't know. I think there's more to this hot dog than you think. I think it was the subtext. I don't know what subtext means, but I think that's what it was. (laughs) So he's getting a hot dog. Yeah. yeah, And he hears some ruckus in the alley. Some kids are attacking a bulldog. And they go, they go like, what's it to you, grandpa? Yeah. And one of them pulls out a switchblade. (laughs) When he confronts him, the kid pulls out a switchblade, and they're like, oh, fuck, this old man's got a gun, and they book it. Yeah. This whole thing is, like, solved in the matter of seconds. Like, Puchinski does not give a fuck. He just pulls out his gun, and he's just like, whatever. Exactly. And I've never felt more bad, because this poor dog is just getting bullied And I know that Peter Boyle is about to steal this dog's body. (laughs) I really hate it. I really wish it was just... I know it would just be Turner and Hooch if the dog just became the partner in the show without Peter Boyle becoming the dog, but I think that should have been the case here. I mean, it would have made sense. Oh, by the way, can I can I just say something really important? When he finds the dog, he uh, he goes, "Oh, a little punchy," and he's like, "I'm gonna give you a hot dog." And uh, he leans in to give the dog a hot dog, but then he goes, "Oh, wait a minute," and then he takes a bite of it. And he also says, "Oh, come on, give me a kiss." <laughs> By the way, this dog eats some shit that I know would just kill it instantly. Oh, you mean like cyanide? (laughs) Yeah, that scene was brutal. Well, Peter Boyle, as you know... Is method. Well, yeah, have you ever seen that episode of Everybody Loves Raymond where they find out that Peter Boyle, but not Peter Boyle himself, but like... The character of the dad. Yeah, Pete, Peter Doyle. Yeah, no, uh, he loses his taste, and they find out because they put very, very hot hot sauce onto food, and they give it to him, and he goes, oh, yeah, it tastes fine. Well, <laughs> in real life, see, Peter Boyle is a method actor. Um, he actually <laughs> burned off his taste buds before Puchinski. <laughs> um, so cyanide is the only way he could taste things. <laughs> And lemon juice, if you would believe it. Yeah, and dogs hate lemon juice. Oh, yeah, so that wouldn't have worked. No, not at all. So (laughs) we cut the next day, and Puchinski and Robert are in the car. Hey, by the way, Robert is the name of his son in Everybody Loves Raymond. Oh, yeah. Yeah, played by Brad Garrett. Do you think this is like, and, and wasn't he a cop? He was a cop. Holy shit. Ooh. This is like Everybody Loves Raymond fanfic. Hold on. Do you think Puchinski changed his last name to Barone after he was somehow put back into his mortal body? (gasps) No, 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 no. Say it with me. Say it with me. Ready? Ready? He He was was a a dog. He was a human he was, the whole he time. He was a human the whole time. Oh my god. In a dog in a dog's uh body. In a dog So he just he evolved from a dog into a human <laughs> over the years. Oh my god. So he, he and Robert He and Robert are in the police car and he uh Oh, oh, wait, can I say something? He also, Peter Boyle says to the dog, you can call me daddy. Does he? I don't think he does. No, he does when he's kissing him. I'm like 99.9% sure he doesn't. I think you're (laughs) conflating that. I think you have some weird Peter Boyle fetishes. No, I swear. No, no, no. It's not some Freudian reading of Puchinski. It's in there. (laughs) Okay, you know what? I'll take your word for it. You rewatched it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Puchinski and Robert are in the squad car the next morning, and Puchinski has adopted the dog. And 
he says, well, Robert's kind of annoyed, saying, at least bathe the dog. And Puchinski says, well, no, he's a bulldog. That's how they always smell. Which, <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. And Robert gets out. Puchinski's, like, smooching on the dog. And another cop comes by and says, oh, hey, Puchinski, finally found someone who will kiss you. And Puchinski responds with, yeah, don't let word get around. Wouldn't want your wife to find out I'm two-timing her. This basically sets the stage for who Puchinski is as a person. And the actor responding to Peter Boyle yelling at him, uh, he has, like, no reaction. Like, you think he would just be angry, but he, he just stops in place, frowns, and then he looks disgusted, honestly. A little bit. Uh, so then we get to Robert, and he is talking to the chief, and he wants to request a transfer. Chief says, for what? Partner incompatibility. Well, what do you mean? Oh, it's why you, when you don't, it's when you don't get along. I know what that means, dipshit. Under, like, I need to understand what the problem is. <laughs> you know, a little bit of like, who's on first type humor right here. Yeah, yeah. And he says, he's always late. He's rude, and he adopted this dog, always breaking wind. The dog? No, Puchinski. And this is where the Wikipedia description comes in. That is a character trait of Puchinski. I think that is also on um, TV tropes. That he's a uh, flatulent individual? I believe so. Um, yeah, TV tropes has a whole thing about Puchinski. Oh, Go boy. check it out. I need to find that page and make it my homepage. <laughs> I need to put it in the signature of my email. <laughs> so the chief says, no, you're not getting a new partner. Puchinski's a great detective. He solved this crime, this crime, and this crime. And he goes, okay, fine. Wait, can I just... The, the cases he names are like... Uh... The something strangler and the post office bomber. Like, how did Puchinski do that? Well, he's just Puchinski. I imagine, like, he just stumbled into the scene and, and accidentally shot his gun. Now, do you think he maybe, before he became a dog, had the bomb sniffing ability of a dog? I like where this is going. And he was just, you know, at the post office, mailing a letter one day, and he just mm -hmm. <laughs> caught a whiff, and he was just like, that's a bomb. <gasps> Wait, so you're implying that uh, Puchinski is a sort of a Weapon X uh, abomination, some kind of a Wolverine? Well, I was thinking maybe he was a dog to begin with, who died and then became a human, who then died again and was put back into a dog. Oh. I like this. So so they end up on a stakeout. <laughs> and while they're on the stakeout, Puchinski says, Ah, oh, I miss working vice. I meet a lot of women working vice. <laughs> and a pizza delivery guy shows up saying, Yo, is this a stakeout? And Puchinski goes, yeah, yeah, hold on. Robert, could you spot me some money? Robert gives him money. He hands it to the pizza delivery guy, goes, uh, keep the change. Oh, thanks, mister. <laughs> guy walks away. Oh, this is the wrong order. I'm going to order another. And they start arguing. And the pizza was shrimp and pineapple. Yeah, the most bizarre combination he immediately throws it into the back seat and lets uh, the dog just eat it. Yeah, and then as they're arguing and the dog is eating this monstrosity of a pizza, they hear a shriek and a robbery happens at an ATM. And Robert gets out, starts chasing after the guy. Puchinski goes, hey, don't do that. And then he just lets him go. <laughs> He phones it in, Robert goes after the guy, ends up in a, 
I think a used car lot. It looks like it's a used car lot. And he's just kind of like walking along, got his gun up. And then the headlights pop on, on one car, and it goes after him. He starts shooting at the car, misses every shot apparently, (laughs) dives out of the way right at the last second. And he goes, hey, Puchinski, he got away. Puchinski? Uh? It, it's it's the worst line read of all time. Yeah, and then Puchinski starts chasing after the car, which, again, in hindsight, he becomes a dog, and he's chasing a car. Well, hang on, but before we go there, this is where I I said that uh, Peter Boyle does not drive, because when he called it in, he drove toward the car lot, and. You could clearly see that it was not Peter Boyle behind the wheel. There is no way. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant that, you know, he just let the dog drive to create the police block. Holy shit. I didn't even <laughs> think of that. <laughs> so he... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say it with me. Say it with me. Okay. Peter Boyle, Peter Boyle was a dog. Was a dog the dog. whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Puchinski creates a police block, and then the dog jumps out the window into the street. He runs after him, trying to save him. He goes, hey, what you doing? Throws the dog out of the way, just in time to get hit by the car. That's just when Robert gets there and goes, oh, God, no. Puchinski, you're dying. And, and, and he immediately asks for the dog. Yeah. And as Puchinski's got, uh, dying, he pulls out his wallet and goes, I need you to do something for me. Pulls out two tickets to something and goes, I got two tickets. I need you to take a day to him or sell him. <laughs> and then he locks eyes with the dog. And there's at least four back and forths between the eyes of Puchinski and the dog. It's very intimate. Oh, and by the way, Peter Boyle has no wounds on him after getting hit by a car. He looks perfectly fine. Well, it's all internal. (laughs) Oh, like Billy Mays. Yeah, when he snorted all that cocaine and died. (laughs) Yeah, it was internal. Yeah, so (laughs) we get angelic music as Puchinski dies, and then we cut to the funeral. After a commercial break. After a commercial break. And then we hear, Hey, Robert, look over here. (laughs) And (laughs) Robert looks around at the funeral. Then he looks down, sees the dog. And the dog is the worst made puppet I've ever seen in my life. Horrifying. Absolutely horrifying. It's like you... It's. Like you put Triumph in the microwave. 100%. Triumph does not look good to begin with. (laughs) It looks worse than Triumph the insult dog. (laughs) It's it's actually, like, scary. Like, there are shots of this that I... I just imagine someone's hand inside of that, and, uh... God, I I don't know. It's just not good at all. And he spouts off And the transition here... Oh, sorry, but the, the transition here is so fast. It is. There's, like, no moment to grieve or anything. It's just dead dog. Done. (laughs) And Robert thinks he's going crazy, and then Puchinski is just like, you want proof? My badge is 309. What I gotta do to convince you? And then he starts singing. Everybody loves somebody sometimes. (laughs) Which he's saying at the stakeout. And Robert was very annoyed. And he goes, oh, Puchinski, how'd you become a dog? And Puchinski goes, oh, well, you know, I was dying and I heard relative voices at the end of the light saying, here, boy, here, boy. And then I woke up and I had a tail. That is so confusing. What version of heaven is that? What, that your relatives think that you're a dog? Yeah, and they're going, here, boy, here, boy. Yeah, I think the wires got crossed at some point. Maybe the dog had a heart attack at the very moment that Buczynski was dying. (laughs) And they were both going at the same exact time. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, he was having a heart attack because he ate like shit. That hot dog finally caught up with him. The hot dog and cyanide. So he goes, Robert goes, oh, well, what are you going to do now? Well, first I'm going to lick myself and then I'm going to catch my killer. It's good to have objectives. Yeah, you know, after you die, you got to have something to do. It's like after you retire, you need to have something to do. <laughs> and Puchinski's trying to get Robert to help him out. Robert goes, oh, I can't. I'm off the case and I was put on a desk. And Puchinski finally, you know, convinces him. And there's a funny joke where he goes, eh, put her there. And he shakes. You know, <laughs> like the dog trick. Yeah. So they go to the station, and while <laughs> and while they're at the station, the the detective that made fun of Puchinski earlier for smooching on the dog says, "Hey Robert, what are you doing with that mutt?" And Robert says, "Well, you know, Puchinski's dead, so you know I got the dog now." Oh yeah, well I know a restaurant that pays five dollars a pound, and then he looks down in his leg. Puchinski pissed all over his leg. He's really embracing the whole dog thing. 100%. And I'm into it. I mean, I get it. You gotta roll with the punches. So, Robert leaves Puchinski with... I assume she's a, either a receptionist or kind of like a assistant of some sort. Or a cop. Or a cop. <laughs> I don't think she was a cop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Um, says, hey, Casey, watch him for a few minutes. While he talks to the captain to get back on the case, he keeps looking back and forth. Puchinski is macking on this lady. Yo, he's like legit going down on her. There's a point where she falls back in her chair and goes like, ha ha ha. It is terrifying. <laughs> now imagine if it was Peter Boyle. The same size as the dog. We have like a little man situation going on. Little man the movie with Marlon Wayans? Yes. I thought about that movie the other day. I literally think about that movie every single day of my life. It is weird that that movie has made its way into our daily routines. Anyways, so <laughs> they go back to Robert's apartment and while he's in his building... He runs into a lady he likes, and Puchinski, trying to be the hopeless romantic he is, he wraps his leash around the two until they're pushed up together. Robert makes an excuse as to why they can't, like, hang out or anything. They get back to the, the apartment, and Puchinski howls at a cop car, turns on the TV. It's an episode of Huckleberry Hound, where Huckleberry Hound is a cop. <laughs> and uh <laughs> I love it. I think it's so great. I think this is the only only thing that's going to make him happy as a dog is Huckleberry Hound. Well, why didn't they just make a Huckleberry Hound show? You know what? Would have been better. Yeah, let's stop, you know, chicken footing around it. Let's go. So, at some point during their conversation at the apartment, Robert calls Puchinski a bulldog, and Puchinski gets offended, saying, Don't call me that. I'm a cop. <laughs> they get in an argument. He says, Oh, well, if you're such a great cop, find a better, pace, uh, better place to live. And he goes, Fine, I will. Gets thrown out. And then he goes, uh, he, he goes, Blue lives matter. <laughs> oh, God. And he gets into the elevator says like oh fourth floor please and a guy's like reading a newspaper presses the button they get to the fourth floor he gets out the guy like lowers his newspaper and is just like there's no one here there's just a dog <laughs> um this is where we establish the fact that everyone can hear him <laughs> which i feel is very important <laughs> and confusing and confusing yes uh, then we get a knock on the door at the apartment. He went to this lady's apartment. And she returned the pooch and says, oh, well, if it's not too much trouble, I want to make dinner for you. She starts making dinner. 
And and that's the widower, right? That Robert mentioned earlier. You know, he's seducing this widower. Yes, I believe she's a widower. Uh, she has a daughter who she brings with her. And she starts cooking dinner. He goes over to Puchinsky on the couch and he's like, oh, what the fuck's wrong with you? I don't know what to do. He's like, oh, just go for it, man. And <laughs> he goes in, hears music, start playing. Again, it is everybody loves somebody sometimes. And Puchinsky's skin along. And he goes in, he goes, excuse me. Robert goes in, picks up Puchinsky, turns off the radio. Puchinsky goes, hey, buddy, don't pick me up. Pick up the babe. He locks Puchinsky in the bedroom, goes back into the kitchen, hears a loud crash, and goes, excuse me a moment. Puchinsky destroys the bed as payback. Then Puchinsky locks himself in the bathroom, which raises... Somehow. Yeah. Which raises so many questions because this, this is a dog. It doesn't have opposable thumbs. At one point, that woman comes to the room and she's like, is everything okay? And Robert has a gun in his hand. And he goes, I'm just training the dog. Yeah, that was a very uncomfortable <laughs> moment. <laughs> uh, so finally, Puchinsky opens the door for Robert. And he's laying on the counter, which, again, how did he immediately get from <laughs> on the counter, down to the ground, opening up a door without opposable thumbs, and then back on the counter in a matter of seconds? He's a mutant. He's a mutant. He's got to be. He's, he's a human, I told you. He's a human in dog skin. And he's looking in the mirror like, oh, man, look at me. I'm a dog. I used to have hair on my back, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Robert tells him, like, oh, quit being sorry for yourself. You've got a lot to be thankful for. You were given a second chance. You got yourself a roommate and a friend. And then he's like, you really mean that? Yeah. Then we cut to the scene of the murder. And a week goes by. Was it a week? Yeah. He, he says, it's been a week. So, apparently, a week goes by then, <laughs> and they're at the scene of the murder. Robert wants to go home, says, oh, come on, let's go. And Puchinsky doesn't want to go. Robert responds with, you're just mad about the rabies shot. Ouch. Well, I assume that's what Puchinsky said, was ouch. And then he goes, oh, wait a minute, that's him. Can't you smell him? <laughs> the killer's there. Again, trying to rob someone at the ATM. They chase him into an alley. Puchinsky climbs up onto a roof, jumps down onto the guy, bites his testicles to save Rob, and then says, I'll have you know I did not enjoy that. And then we cut to a picture of them both getting medals for their accomplishments. And it's framed and in the apartment. Yeah, more time goes by very fast. And they're both on the couch watching TV. Robert grabs some popcorn, and then Puchinsky shoves his face into the popcorn bowl. And then Robert spits out the popcorn. And this is when we're revealed to that Puchinsky is now on the K-9 unit, and they're partners again. And <laughs> they're deciding on what to watch. Puchinsky goes, oh, what, don't, wanna, don't I get a vote? No, you don't get a vote. You're a dog. And he goes, oh, well, in that case... And then he starts chewing on his shoes, goes, hmm, loafers. And they chase each other around the apartment. And that, my friends, is Puchinsky. <sighs> A show with three stakeouts. That's about it. That is about it. Literally nothing happens in this show. Well, a lot happens. Peter Boyle becomes a dog. Andrew, <laughs> I just noticed... Oh. As I said that, I looked at your Skype icon. Mm -hmm. Your Skype icon is a dog. Yeah, I, I've ascended. Andy, are you a pooch now? Yeah, but I, uh, I didn't opt in for the microwave treatment, so I look a little better than uh, Puchinsky. That's fair. That is fair. So we're going to take a little break, 
and we will be right back. Hey, I'm Shar. And I'm Kelly. And together we host Drinking and Screaming. We're a new horror discussion podcast based out of Vancouver, British Columbia, where each episode we pair a new cocktail with our movie of the week. For instance, I'm pairing this ad with just a shot of tequila. You know, because... Most ads are horrible. With Drinking and Screaming, you'll find yourself pulled into a new horror film to discuss and a new cocktail to try every week. Every episode is laced with great soundtracks, theme breakdowns, production trivia, Char's bad drinks, and so much more. What? I said clips from the movie. New episodes every week. Join in on the spoops. Drinking and Screaming, wherever podcasts are found. I give this ad a 5 out of 10. You know, we don't rate the movies. 5 out of 10. So Andy, had this godforsaken, or should I say dogforsaken show, have continued, what kind of episodes do you think we would have seen? Well, you know, I think it's very strange, um, given that we uh, did this before, and I'm trying to remember what I might have said last time, Um, but I, I do know this. I think the show is about Puchinski constantly uh, switching bodies with all these dogs. I think every episode he should switch bodies with a dog. Now, do you think that a dog, that he dies every episode and he locks eyes with another dog? Yes, and he has to hold them. Okay, well, he doesn't have thumbs, so I don't know how he can hold anything. Well... I beg to differ. Have you ever heard of male dogs? They ha- they do this thing when they reproduce where their um, organs become basically a knot so that um, they can't stop reproducing when they start. I don't know much about dog anatomy, so I'm going to have to take your word for that. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> I think I think it would be a series about him becoming all these fun little dogs. And the reason why is we got to get rid of this puppet. <laughs> oh, hey, a pup at Oh, I see what you did there. So, my biggest question that I think needs to be addressed is where is this dog's soul? I agree. This dog didn't die. No. So, I assume, further in the series, we would have kind of like a fight or a struggle between who's in control. I think this dog's soul is still in there, and Puchinski is just sharing the body. Ah, that's very like, uh, Spider-Man. That's Spider-Man versus Doc Ock in, in Peter Parker's body. I thought... Peter Parker was put into Doc Ock's body and died. Uh, yeah, but he tried to get back into his body a few times, and ultimately the remnants of him were still in there. Oh, okay. I don't know much about Spider-Man, although I did know the fact that Doc Ock and Spider-Man switch bodies, so... Anyways... And I th- I think <laughs> it's very puchinski esque Do you think Puchinski was ripped off? Do you think that Stan Lee owes an apology to Peter Boyle. Well, truthfully, I think Dan Slott owes an apology, um, at least. And, um, yeah. So I think we would get, like, episodes where Peter Boyle, a.k.a. Puchinski, is trying to, like, maintain control during investigations, and we cut back and forth between him and the dog. So, like, maybe... There, during an investigation, Rob's like, Puchinski, what are you doing? And the dog's just kind of like sniffing another dog's ass. And he's just like, oh, God, no, the dog's taking over. And then maybe there's another episode where, like, Puchinski starts humping someone's leg. And they're, and he's just like, well, I honestly can't tell if it's Puchinski or the dog at this point. You know, because Puchinski is a horny old man. Yeah, you know. We've we already we've seen it before, but now uh, I think we can get a little more graphic with a bigger budget. A little bit. This is an HBO show now. Mm-hmm. We got Watchmen, mm-hmm. Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. and Puchinski. 
Mm -hmm. And we're on at 3 a.m. Uh, right after uh, Sex Cab Confessions. Yes, which also was a crossover with Cash Cab. <laughs> I love that episode where Ben Bailey started ranting off his sex stories. <laughs> And then he, he does trivia about his sex history, which nobody knows. That man follows everyone on Twitter. I love him. He followed me, I think, at one point. He's got no standards, so his sex stories, damn. I don't think he's had sex, to be honest. You know what? I can't disagree with you. Hey, can we, can we get you to tweet at him on the unaired uh, handle? Sure. I'll say, hey, man, I've heard theories that you're just a bald Christopher Maloney. Is that true? <laughs> you're the D-list Chris Maloney. <laughs> I don't mean that. I'm sorry. I love Cash Cab, I, even though one of them killed somebody. Did it? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. So I also think at some point, so like maybe season two. So you know how Always Sunny, the first season, mm -hmm. kind of like, it was a good season, but it wasn't really great in the ratings. So they were like, you know what? We got to bring Danny DeVito in. Danny DeVito is going to bring our ratings up. Uh, we need to get another character in. We're going to get Joe Pesci. That actually would be great casting. <laughs> We're going to get Joe Pesci in the but, show. And he... But I, but I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Joe Pesci is going to be Detective Paratelli. There's going to be a shootout <laughs> in the pet store. He's going to lock eyes with a parrot. Uh-oh. Now he's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. I think we need to get Joe out of retirement. We need to send him an email immediately. We gotta strike the iron while it's hot. And the best part is, because parrots can talk, they don't need to make excuses for why they hear, like, voices or anything. Puchinski, he can't just, like, have a conversation with someone. Paratelli, he can just be like, Brock? You're a piece of shit, Brack. <laughs> and they're going to be like, oh, that's adorable. Puchinski could, like, send messages through him. That could work. <laughs> he could write things with his paws. Oh, but Puchinski's illiterate. I forgot. Yeah. Too, too much hot dog water. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andy, I have formally decided to create a theme song for a segment um mm -hmm. it's time for crossover y'all get caught up in the crossover yeah what show would you cross over with this and i think we're gonna agree on this hmm show oh okay well there are a couple ways this could go um can i include two shows you 100% can. Okay. I mean, there was an episode of Sweet Life of Zack and Cody that crossed over with That's So Raven and Hannah Montana. So clearly... <sighs> You're right. Bob Iger, you fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bobby, here's one for the money. It's Puchinski. Um, it's an episode where he meets... Um, the 100 good deeds uh for what's his face eddie eddie mcdowd Mc... that is exactly what i was thinking of eddie mcdowd and i'm glad that you also thought it was 100 good deeds i googled it it's actually just 100 deeds for eddie mcdowd wait so he doesn't even have to be nice no i always thought it was 100 good deeds for eddie, for eddie mcdowd just 100 deeds homies just got to do 100 deeds the fuck does that even mean you could just buy like a hundred um sticks of gum and be like here's my receipt it's my deed exactly anyways continue um 
And I think it should be revealed that the owner of Eddie at this point is Earl from My Name is Earl. Okay. And they all team up on an adventure to turn Puchinski back into a human. But at the end of the episode, it's, re- it's so it's an hour and a half long special. Um, and at the end of the episode, it's revealed that Puchinski was actually a human in dog skin the whole time. And so he mutates into a horrible looking Peter Boyle and uh, they have to fight him, unfortunately. And it's the 100th deed um, for Eddie McDad. So what you're telling me is that this is actually a four-way crossover because now Peter Boyle is an anamorph. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's a big anamorph stew. Everybody's involved. Um, yeah, everybody's in there. That one guy who uh, turned into a bird and forgot that <laughs> uh, he was a human. <laughs> <laughs> so... As for how this show would end, I'm thinking there's like some big case or something. There's a season long arc. They're trying to take down some like big like mob boss or something. Mm -hmm. They finally get to him. And Puchinski, much like at the end of the film Turner and Hooch, dives in front of Robert to save him from a gunshot and even references it. You know, we got to get the synergy with the Turner and Hooch TV show. And he says, oh, I'm just like Turner and Hooch. And then uh, he gets shot and he goes, my Hooch. (laughs) And, you know, there's another funeral, but a dog funeral. Not as many people are there because nobody else knew that he was a dog. And then he hears in the distance, beep, beep. Beep, beep. Hey, Robert. Remember Knight Rider? I locked eyes with a car when I died. I'm Kit. Look at me. I'm Kit now. God damn it. It's like Pickle Rick. <laughs> this whole show is Pickle Rick. This whole show is Pickle Rick. It's, it's Poochie Peter. Poochie Rick. Poochie Rick. <laughs> so now we essentially let into the Knight Rider reboot in 2007, 8, whatever year that was. Oh, I see. The the one that was made. I thought you were implying that Puchinski came out somewhere after the hellhole that was 1990. No, no, no. I'm saying eventually... When Knight Rider got rebooted in, I think, 2008, Puchinski was actually Kit. Damn. This show and has so many branches. It reaches out to they were so inside. Many. They were inside of a snow globe the whole time. Yeah. Tommy Westfall. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, it actually works out because my name is Earl... And Knight Rider were both NBC shows. Huh. So what you're saying is Randy should have been Knight Rider. Randy should have been Knight Rider, played by Peter Boyle, instead of played by the guy that played Mr. Feeney. Okay, we gotta dig up Peter Boyle, because I want to see him in a movie with Randy. Okay, so we gotta do Weekend at Peter's, (laughs) where we just puppeteer (laughs) Peter Boyle. Um. <laughs> hmm. You know, I, I I'm half tempted to Google what happened to his body, but I I don't want to know. You know, I'm gonna guess he was buried. Well, yeah, I mean, but like, did they burn him or did they like put the body in there? Well, they put his body into a car. That's true. He went for a little ride before he left. Yeah. Anyways, I think that's gonna do it. For our second take on Puchinski. Um, so, Andy, you're yes. going to be launching a new podcast soon. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have to talk about this again. Um, yes. Yeah, so things are going great. Our, my first guest that I had lined up for the show actually uh, got bumped tonight. So uh, 
That's why we were able to uh, meet a little earlier today. Wait a minute. So you're telling me Adam was your first guest? Yes. Um, Well, right now I'm cataloging a bunch of episodes. Uh, Anyway, I should mention the the podcast. It's uh, Five Questions uh, with um, Anders Croft. And uh, it's basically a show where I get to talk to my friends and ask them five questions about their life and things that I want to know about, you know, how their couch is doing. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully things will be coming out in September. And uh, I don't have um, any social media set up for it just yet, but you can follow me at Anders underscore Croft on Twitter. Yes, and we will update you. Um, coincidentally... That's only like two, three weeks after this episode's going to air. So some uh, synergy right there. Oh, like Turner and Hooch. Yeah, like Turner and Hooch when it crossed over with Puchinski. Um, yeah, so, we're, we're going to be the power hour. You know, we, we bleed right into each other. So if you want to follow Unaired, we're just Unaired Podcast on everything. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that fun stuff. And, uh, you know, thanks for listening. Uh, Just remember, some things are better left unaired. Bye. Everybody wants a poochie. Sometimes. Sometimes.